Jaruan, today I want to talk to you about the relationship in phase between a DI and a base amp. It's standard procedure when we record bass that we generally record it in two ways. Recording straight from the amp, meaning using a proper microphone, a proper signal path that will bring the microphone signal level and the recorded amp into our console and into our pre, depending on what we're using. And most likely we're going to treat it in a specific way. The second way is recording simultaneously at the eye. Now, why do we do this? Well, first and foremost, because DI's and bass amp have two very distinct sounds. Now, the DI is very mid-rangey. It's very um, kind of full on the lower mids. It gives us a lot of details within the fret of the bass, but it doesn't have a lot of the girth that you might get from a bass amp. The bass amp, on the other hand, like the example that I'm about to play you, plays a major role because the bass amp is characterized by the actual sound that the bass player is intended to have within that specific record. Let's say, for instance, the bass player is playing with a specific model, which is, of course, hooked with a pedal board. Pedal board that he or she might be using to craft specific sounds. Hence, we want to grab the sounds so that that sounds belong to the actual performance but then we have a di now with this di we can carve a bit more of the mid and kind of like if the bass player is playing with a pick bit more pick sound but also we can reamp it now every time we record more than one signal simultaneously in this case signals might have difference in timing what do i mean well, the DI, for instance, is going to reach our console slightly before the signal that has been recorded through an amplifier. Why? Well, the DI is simply going straight from the base DI tie line inside the board and then tape machine or in this case Pro Tools. The base, on the other hand, is going through the whole pedal board, the amp coming out of the amp tr being transduced being recorded with a microphone or multiple microphones, a multitude of microphones, and then that path, signal path, is going to feed our console. Hence, the two bass lines, although are played simultaneously, are going to be recorded with a slight delay. Now, this can, of course, compromise the overall tone of your bass, meaning all of a sudden you're going to start missing a lacking, specifically on some notes, more focused within the lower mid-range, a lot of details. So in this tutorial I'm going to teach you what do I generally do in order to enhance the bass and make sure that these two performances are completely aligned, face coherent, so that you can get the best out of your low end. Now in this case, as you can see, we have um, a bass performance. Now the top one, we have our DI and at the bottom we have our amp. I'm going to go ahead and show you first and foremost how these two look like. So, of course, during the recording, this might happen where the signals are actually out of phase. So, top and bottom. The DI in this case is going to have a valley, a peak, another valley, and another peak versus the bass amp, which in this case has pick, valley, pick, valley, or trough. Now, I'm going to play you the two signal one by one so that you can have a sense of what is that we're going to be dealing with. Let's start with uh, the DI. I'm going to go ahead and play you the amp. Mm -hmm. 
So you hear you heard right out of the bath that the DI, although in this case I should mention that DIs play a major role in the way a specific baseline in this case is being recorded. And I use a variety of them depending on what type of production I'm dealing with. In this case, I have recorded uh, the base DI um, via uh, a SensAmp. A SensAmp is a DI which has the advantages of actually introducing specific coloration due to specific circuitry so that you can emulate, let's say, a VST um, Ampeg or any different types of kind of um, amp simulation. So as you can hear over here, the actual DI base, it has a bit of coloration. It's not a clean base, something that I would record maybe on something a bit more pop and less rock and roll. I'm going to give you, again, uh, another preview of how the DI sounds. Amp. So, the great thing about recording these two microphones or these two signals is that right now we actually could blend in portions of the DI versus the amp and right out of the bath start building our sound. It's like playing with two different types of uh, compression and two different types of EQ curves so that we can carve in the best balance between these two instruments. But again, when we start summing things together, we might occur or encounter problems with phase. I'm going to play you a little bit the amp, which right now it's giving us the most out of low frequencies, and then I'm going to add the bass, the, the DI bass, of course. DI. Amp. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time starting only with the DI and then moving to the amp and the DI together. So what is that you notice? Well, all of a sudden, when we blend in these two signals together, all of a sudden, the low end, the fundamental of these two, it's kind of lost due to phase shift. So some of the frequencies are actually going against each other. And of course, the phase uh, cancellation that occurs between the I and amp. So I'm going to show you a couple ways that I generally deal with this. And I'm going to start actually um, with the DI. I'm going to go and open a little lab, IBP from UAD, which is a phenomenal plugin. And pretty much within this plugin, I am capable of adjusting the face, so invert the face, change different degrees of face, but as well, kind of like delaying part of the signal, which is maybe what we are going to end up doing. So I'm going to go ahead and, again, give you first an insight of how this box works and how it sounds. So I'm going to start it bypassing it, and then I will re-engage it. So right out of the bath, this plugin, it's already working some magic with phase alignment. And as you can hear, actually the bass start acquiring a bit more round tone. But I'm going to show you what I generally do um, with this plugin on a bass line. So the first thing I want you to show, or to see actually, is this. Let's go ahead and actually select this line over here, maximize it. As you can see, there is a bit of latency 
if we may call it this way, between where this pick is ending and where this other pick on the actual cab is starting. See over here? So the goal is using this plugin not only to adjust phase, but as well to kind of like delay the um, the eye track so that you can get the maximum amount of low end since we're kind of building a constructive phase. So let's go ahead and replay the section. So what I'm gonna do, it's a very interesting trick. Uh, we're by adjusting the delay we could actually help building a stronger low end and how do we do it is how do you achieve it it's inverting the phase so here the base in phase and then I will invert it phase inverted You hear that? So you hear that when I flip the bases out of phase, all of a sudden we start losing all the bottom end. Well, this is the trick. So I'm going to flip the actual phase and then play with the delay until they cancel them even further. So at this point, what I'm going to do is flip the basis in phase again, and we should acquire a much bigger, strong fundamental out of these two bases. So here, the before, I just flip the face before. After. Out of phase, in phase. Especially on the low end, right now we have aligned them so that the fundamental and the actual primary node of the fundamental frequency just come forwards and doesn't cancel or get masked. Okay, so this is the very first thing I would generally do. Um, again, I'm going to give you a preview of how the bass was looking before and then after. Before. After. Before. after so this is a great starting point because right now we don't have to go nuts between finding frequencies or figuring out what is that doesn't work now I generally do two other things since there is a very strong build up in many cases on specifically on mid frequencies here is what I do I choose which one of the two lines it's giving me the most out of mid frequencies and low frequencies. It's sort of like applying multi-band processing or multi-EQ processing. How does it work? So on the DI, I'm gonna open, let's say, my Pro-Q3. I'm gonna start setting this in uh, natural phase, so to avoid any problems with uh, phase cancellation or interaction, since we're gonna be using very steep filters. I'm going to create a high pass filter. I'm going to use something kind of brutal, 36 dB per octave. And I'm going to start filtering the actual DI until more or less 100 or 120 hertz.
So with this EQ, without, with. So what are we doing in a nutshell is removing all these frequencies below this cutting point. I'm going to let you hear what I'm talking about. All the extreme low end. Now by doing this, I'm making the mid range of my DI a bit more forward. Avoiding this to compete with my amp. On my amp, on the other hand, which sounds like this. What I'm going to do is simply copying this EQ, so Option, click, and drag, and reverse the actual cutoff. Instead of being a high pass filter, I will transform this into a low pass filter at the exact same cut frequency, right? So that right now, the DI is taking care of a bit more of the upper mid range of the bass, whereas the amp is actually giving, giving me back a lot of the build up from the low end. And I'm enhancing everything that I've been cutting from the bass. Listen up. Without. With. Now you might arguing, well, you removed a lot of the details, a lot of the clarity. Well, the clarity is actually coming from the DI. So I'm going to let you hear these two together in a second. So this is only the amp, and then I will add the DI. Listen how big of a difference this EQ will do. So I'm going to let you hear actually with and without the Pro Cues. I'm going to bring this over here and I will press Shift Option Command to bypass only these two plugins. So this is without and then with. So right now what I'm doing is sacrificing a bit of that extremely high end of the amp, but you've heard how much the depth and the power of the low mid range of the bass is coming forward. The last thing I'm going to do um, is actually on the DI since is the one that has the majority of the high notes. I'm going to apply a compressor. Let's go with a universal audio. Electronics. Let's go with a silver, which sounds really good on bass. So now the Teletronics is actually adding a lot more control to the mid-range given the fact that it's an optical compressor right now it's taking care in a very musical and slow way yeah, sort of uh, of the upper mid-range of the bass I'm gonna let you hear before without and then with So the Dilatronics LA 2A is uniforming a bit the bass performance. Now both of these basses together sound something like this. I'm 
I'm going to let you hear where we started from. So this is without any treatment, and then I'm going to play it with it in context. Fantastic. Now, what is that I feel is lacking on my bass? A bit more control of this extremely low end created by the amp. So on the actual submix, which is a folder, what I'm going to do is to pull up a C4 by Waves, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal multiband compressor. I will bypass everything and I'm just going to put a crossover filters around 100, let's say 120. I'm going to let you hear what the, the actual compressor is hearing. So the very sub pace, sub bass, sorry, of the bass part. Um, and what I'm going to do with this is compress it quite a lot. Let's go minus 7.7. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to speed up a little bit the release time as well as slow down a bit the attack. And I'm going to bring the actual gain up. So what I want to do is keep the low end under control still at a minimal level or nominal level of zero but boosting this low end so that the low end is absolutely pocketed towards this frequency that goes from 16 up to 120 hertz. So listen to the before and after. Right now, without the C4, with with so the name of the game is making sure the base is focused enough but yet preserve a lot of the low end. And with the C4, this is exactly what we're doing. We're kind of like expanding the low end, but still keeping it under control, right? And this makes sure, it makes sure that the actual bass has a lot of details while the bass player is playing, but the low end doesn't overpower the mix. Now, the last couple of things I generally do is to add a bit of effects. So I have an actual unit, uh, an SPX-90 by Yamaha, which is just touching on it. I have a parallel bass, which is feeding another CLA-2A for extra um, RMS. And as you can see, it's barely touching the compressor. And then I have a parallel mix, which feeds um, a Universal Audio 1176 edition with 2 to 1 ratio. You play this in context with drums. And this is pretty much everything I generally use when I'm working on a track which is this aggressive. So as you can understand, it's not a lot of plugin. It's how you use your plugins. So for me, the most important thing in terms of bass is how can I acquire a lot of details within the mid range, but have a lot of sub frequency supporting the effect. And voila, pretty much this is my general chain that I use. 
uh, to make sure that my bass can support the kind of mood of the song. Until the next tutorial, ciao.